So we have great Torah, uh, as always. Uh, we have more than a minion online. We have a uh, we have a, a bar mitzvah worth online, which is great. Uh, everybody's here, which is it's great to see. Um, and uh, and as always, great Torah. It's a little snowy here. Um, I don't know about Paris. We didn't even start yet. Oh my. <laughs> You know what? I would always search to Steve. I would not say, yeah. Um, anyway, so questions will come in a moment. But first, just to welcome everybody. Um, when bagels do arrive, please help yourself. Do not be, uh, uh, you know, shy, which I know you people are not shy. Uh, uh, but we have great Torah to study. Um, uh, Raj is uh, doing an errand and family. So Harry is in charge. And that's a problem. We Harry's in control. Um, but we are thrilled that everybody's here. Um and uh and here we share in the blessing. Join me. Baruch Elohim Amen. Um so uh you know if you are uh you know joining us online and you can mute yourselves until you need to talk, that's good. So we won't hear you eating your cereal. Uh uh, we have uh, the beginning of the Tabernacle Construction Project. Um, this is a portion we have studied before. I even... Jeffrey, you're muted. You're muted, Jeffrey. You're muted. Oh, Oh, Harry muted me. Bad guy. Um, <coughs> um, <coughs> but we studied this last night briefly. It's a portion we've studied before. Um, the Koshi is uh, a natural. Uh, and what we have explored, at least the first part, uh, why a physical space for holiness, spirituality, the Holy One? Is that even possible? And if so, what's the Mishkan for? Um, how does this building project frame our life purpose and actually help us respond to God's call, which is in line with our theme. And we have some key words that we're going to go over. Um, maybe I'll even turn my computer and so you can see them. So the camera will be over there uh, later on. Um, but for now, uh, we're reading the the beginning of Parsha Truma. I'm going to start with Lisa and go right around. Lisa. <laughs> Gold, silver, and copper. Oil for and for the breast kings. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, exactly as I show you the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings. Sarah, so you Yep, that's the whole text we need. That's all we need. Don't turn the page yet because you want to be on this page. So <clears throat> notice our Koshi is not. Where did they get the dolphin skins? And why did they? That is not the Koshi. Uh, and that's where everybody's mind goes. Really? Dolphin skins? What are they doing? So that is not the Koshi. But I mean, it informs the Koshi a little bit. Um, nor is the Koshi <clears throat> uh, the first line, which is, uh, I know every year, this is Cliff Shapiro's bar mitzvah portion. And I know that because Cliff Shapiro wrote such a memorable drash, um, which was, what's the difference between Taruma and Sadaka, and why does it matter to the Washington Temple community? It was it was great. Um, uh, yes, that is the, uh, the son of Steve Shapiro. Uh, one of the sons. Uh, what? And more. It came for you. It did come from Um, uh, Our focus is verse 8. Right? And all you need is, uh, you know, um, is uh, is five words. The asuli mikdash vishachanti bitocha. It seems like it's obvious. It's easy. It's simple. But it may not be. Um, 
So, um, uh, and a little bit verse nine, because that's the affirmation of verse eight. Um, so, uh, as I said last night, if you were going to pick, thank you, Marvin. If you were going to pick one verse to put on the outside of the temple you're building, it is, in fact, this verse, verse eight. Um the Asuli Mikdash Vishakanti Bitokan and let them make me a mikdash that I may dwell among them. Um there's the there's an obvious you know question to all of this, which is what? Okay. Very different than the golden cats, you know. For sure, for sure. What 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 strikes you, right? You, um, think about this. Where has Israel been? Israel Israel left Egypt. Israel went through. Well, remember what happens, right? So, uh, chapter 15, 14, we're at the edge of the sea. Fifteen, we make it through and sing a song. Sixteen, we have no water. Seventeen, we're fighting. Eighteen, we get uh, Jethro. Yitro comes. Uh, 1920, we get the Ten Commandments, right? Uh, 22, 23, uh, a little bit, of, we get we get more laws, Mishpatim, 70 more laws. Uh, 24, uh, we have a ratification ceremony with God, uh, 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 you know, with the elders. And now we're at 25. And the first thing we hear after all that process, after all that wandering, all that, you know, tumult and revelation is let them make me a sanctuary so I may dwell among them. Why? Because he wants to meet the Fellowship, connection, meeting. So, so, uh, you, so to say, you know, listen, uh, you're not going to meet God, you know, in that board, right? You're not going to meet God when you're slipping the kids to skating practice or, you know, with way too early for whatever it is. So maybe you need that focus place. <clears throat> yep. This doesn't say, you know, build it here and stay in here. So one key thing is, this is portable. It goes where you go, right? Michael Feinberg, and then here. Well, maybe if they didn't build the Mishkan, Israel would forget God again. All right, wait a minute. I have to do this with Michael. Stay one second. We have to go to uh, audio. How do I do this? Oh. Uh, no, yeah, no, you're good. You're good, mm -hmm. but... Um, and you're Michael, good. I just have to take the... Uh, let me see. Select a speaker. Oh, can't, you haven't got your your owl or whatever. No, we do have we do we do have the owl. Can you can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. I can hear you. But uh, I what speaker I do I see? Hear people in the room. Same as system. Do I do that? I hear you, but not the people in the room. Yeah, try the LG. Yeah. This one here. All right, the microphone is set to your laptop, Rabbi, not the owl. Right. Bring in, the owl. Bring in the owl. No, we no, we are we are in the owl now. Now your voice is resonant and very Sinaitic, Michael. <laughs> oh well. So say say what you said again. Well, I was just saying, maybe if they didn't build the Mishkan, Israel would forget God again. Ah, so maybe the Mishkan is in order to remember, listen, that God of Sinai, God's still here. Okay, Harry. <clears throat> where what? Oh, where? So, it, so where do you build it, right? So, right, right. <laughs> yep. Where does it go? Where does it go? And, and by the way, we do get that later on, but right here we don't. We just get build it. Mark. 
Right, so it seems like it is a communal building project. It's we are bringing all the stuff to some central location, right? As Gary noted, right? So it's not, it's a separating from your personal life, but there is a personal connection. There must, because we are all, we're bringing all the stuff, right? Uh, still can't hear the room. All right, so maybe I blew it. Maybe I chose the wrong thing. We have to make it go to the hour. So hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let's just see. Mute. Uh, same as system. Let's try that. Maybe that's it, right? All right. So, All right how are we now? Do you hear the? Do wait, Harry, talk. Do we hear the room? No. No. This is one. Raj is not here. This is the problem. You know what? Do me. Do me a favor. Just um, just ask one of the guys, uh, Marvin or Carlos. Um, say, hold a second. No, I could, I could do it. Hold on a second. This is this is all doable within the um, within the the, the context of um, you know. That's the problem. That is, you know, don't be a wise guy. Don't be a wise guy. Uh, wait one second. Wait one second. Remain calm. Remain calm. Uh, Carlos, can you come fix the owl? Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'll speak. I will not let anybody else. Can you hear me fine? Is that okay? We good? Yes. Okay. Um, you are resolute. Yeah. I think I put you in the wrong, I think I put you in the wrong, uh, speaker. You're on the, I think maybe the TV speaker and not the microphone speaker, the owl, but doesn't matter. You, you all, we can hear you all. So, the big question is uh, for us is um, why build this here and now and how are, in a way, how are we still building, right? That's the big question, the ultimate question. Uh, Clarence. Right. As Susan said, a mechanism to buy. I think the, the people online said, I can't hear uh, the in the room. So we can't hear I think we're on the wrong thing. But that doesn't say owl any place. Isn't it supposed to say owl? Yeah. So do we have to unplug and plug? I knew it. That's always the magical thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's weird. The video's working. The TV's working. So why isn't that working? It's weird. Right. So. Yeah. No cool. Hey, you want to do this? Remain calm. This is just a test. Go up. You need one of these guys? Yeah. Oh, you have one? Okay. All right. We are, we are, uh, sorry for the interruption, guys. Thank you, Josh, for the good Jewish humor. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. How many Jews does it take to build a Mishkan? Is what Josh just asked. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, he's that. We try a different power strip. A different power strip? Yeah, you think so? But yeah. so we, let me just see if we. Well, let's check over here and see if we have a. Uh, uh, same as system. No, it should say owl up there. It's yeah. select the microphone, right? Okay. All right. Yeah, All right. Can uh can I continue? Can people online hear me? You can hear me. You just can't hear the room. I mean, you can see me yes. as well, right? Yes. All right. All right. Yes. So I'm going to continue just because of time, so I don't want to lose too much time. Uh, Lisa, I'll repeat everybody's comment in the voice that they asked. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, so so um so Lisa got it. All right. Lisa just said they're all bringing gifts from the heart, treasures because God is a treasure to them. No, right? No uh, no doubt. They're bringing not sadaka but taruma. Taruma is from the root like ram or right, right to lift up. So they're they're gifts that lift you up in the given, right? Clarence. And this is Uh, ah, yeah, so, yeah, so what, yeah, so, I mean, Clarence is pointing out two key things. One is, is this a, is this a commandment? It does, it sounds like sort of, but it's just, it's like a really compelling suggestion. And then, um, you know, what, what they're building, not just a place, but something that is, you know, affordable. Yeah, but it's, it is, it is a taste of the world to come, right? I would call it. You know, in a way, right? In a way, it's, I mean, not to go mana, but it is something, a divine, a divine encounter is what they're building, right? The possibility of a divine encounter. Seriously. Beautiful. So knowing that, that I, remember, I just recapitulated everything. Elizabeth, I'm going to get you a second. I recapitulated everything, you know, by chapter. We understand that they, they're they a little bit distanced from Sinai. Now. And so one thing here is just to keep them connected to them. Elizabeth, uh, John, and then Jane. And then hopefully we're going to go to the reference. It's strike. Can you hear me now? Oh, my God. So well. <laughs> okay. What's um, confounding for me is that God both needs us to do all this fancy stuff to approach God and everything, but he's also threatening us if we don't do this stuff. So it's ugh. it's a little scary, but it's also, um, well, anyway, I'll just say that. Both yeah, needing I, us I, and I'm, I'm, us. I, yeah, I'm not sure here there's any threat. At least it doesn't seem there's an inherent threat here. Uh, as As was pointed out, by Clarence, it seems like this is let them, right? Mm -hmm. um, right, make for me. So it's clearly yeah. a divine, you know, you know, ask, but is it a threat? I don't know, John. Yeah, to your to your original question, it, it, there are two points. One is, it seems to me that Israel's on a journey, the people are on a journey, as you said, from a culture, Egypt, which is highly visual, they build big buildings. They uh, write all over them. Um, and so there may be a need to focus people by giving them something that they can look at. Awesome. So it's the idea of focusing people. We are now changing the owl. So if you feel like you're cut off for a second, I, I'm assuming, um, you, you know, in a moment, you may not be able to see us, but maybe not. Maybe these guys are so good. These are like the guys that change the tires at the Indy 500. <laughs> like they come in, you don't even know they change. It's 14 seconds, boom, you're back on the track. Um, Jane, we had her hand next. Uh, I think that most of them, um, not just the attention for the Lord, but mainly because, number one, um, after Sinai, everybody makes it um be it now first of all yes right so we need right right i'm i'm i wouldn't be honest right i i am easily distracted Right. Um, like when I drive and I notice like a beautiful thing, I would say to my kids, will you look at that? And my wife would say, I think you're driving. I think you're driving. Right. So I, I heard everything you said. Right. Which is, yeah, we need it because we're distanced from the thunder and the lightning. 
right? And we need some place that's going to remind us, right? Last comment, Steve, then we're going back to the reference. It forces you to work as a group together. It really makes everybody think about how it has to work and how it comes together. And it's there's no individual. There's no I in a team. There's no I in building that. Right. So we're not just it's building specific. It's to the it's right. down to the dolls. It's exactly the way it should go. Right. We are we are quite literally right building a community. Go to the remes, and I want to show you that it's more than. First of all, all all of you people are so on target because you're part of a covenant community, which is large by temple. Um, and but I want to show you how the rabbis sort of lay this out, what their concerns are, what they think we're building, and what what I think all of us understand that they are building or that we are building still. Um, so going using the the rabbis, where where it are right? I know uh, Susan. So you can give us you can give us the first two. So first, the Rambam, Maimonides, says, "Let them make me a sanctuary to keep them from idolatry." Right, and he, why does he say that? He says that for the same reason that you said it. Because what this, we're building this as opposed to golden yeah, chapter thirty-two, as opposed to the golden calf. So the key here is an understanding what we and and if you if you if you take it as a given. Uh, there's no time sequence in Torah. Um, we don't know when things happened. So, you know, everybody, maybe, maybe they tried the cap before this. Who knows? But the rabbis look at this and say, you're building this, not that. Okay. Um, uh, the Rashi uh, takes us uh, closer to, uh, it says, Asuli Mikdash, right? Okay. Go ahead. Why Mikdash? Not the sole dwelling place for God, but a house where God's holiness will rest. Right. So why is, what is Rashi's concern here? Makashel Rashi, as we'd say. What's Rashi's question? Well, right. you're not making a thing. You're not worshiping a thing. You're, you're worshiping what's inside. Right. So it's, you know, God in the box. So the so, box. Ra so Rashi's very careful because he understands what Rambam is saying, even though Rashi came uh, almost 200 years before Rambam. Um, Rashi's saying... Uh, you're not building a place to, to you, know, you know, to think God, God's contained therein, mm -hmm. right? Be careful, right? Because the rabbis are concerned with our theology. What are we going to think about, right? Well, uh, how are we going to understand this? Oh, we can only go to this shrine to worship God. We can only be here. Does that mean God lives here? This is, right, God has an actual address. Is that what we're saying? Uh, you know, that it gets a little it's slippery slope, um, right? So we have to be careful. Um uh da, 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 da. and and not now so Sefer Chinu 16th century uh, really uh, pedagogic approach trying to get the educational uh lessons from Torah um you know understands um you know why would it be be building this house aren't it make me a sanctuary the building of a house in God's name for us to pray and sacrifice was inspired <clears throat> by our needs, not because God needs a place to dwell amongst us. Right. As Jane said, God doesn't need a place, right? We might need a place. God doesn't need a place. Um, uh, and, and, and the Pesita Rabati uh, just affirms that, right? Uh, ninth century Midrash. My, my teacher, Norman Cohen, uh, did an amazing translation and book on this. Arnie, give us one more before we go to bed. When Moses was given the command to construct the tabernacle, he was bewildered. The entire universe cannot contain the infinite one. How then, this little house? God replied, the mikdash is not to be measured according to my dimensions, but rather yours. <clears throat> Which you're saying, obviously, Jane? This is for you, not for me. It's for you, not for me, and even something more. When you uh, when you build something according to plan, first of all, look at you looking at somebody who's never done this in his life. Because what do I build? I don't build anything, though I do build a lot of things, but nothing physical. Um, so if you if the people who build something according to plan and changed the plan, or altered the plan, or adapted the plan, 
I once talked to an uh, a, uh, a Bob Emery, uh, may his memory be a blessing about this. Bob Emery was a great architect. And when Bob Emery was designing the sanctuary, he took inspiration and he helped us design uh, the new sanctuary. And I still have his notes. Um, and and uh, and he said we should we should use the plan of the Torah. Mm. Uh, and then in his notes it says LT dimension. And I said, "What's that?" He said, "Well, you know, we have to make it work for us." So in a way, this God is saying, "Listen, here's the plan, but guys, people, make it work for you. Make it." fit your sensibility of what this sacred space should be. <laughs> you got all the material, you got all the plans, now you build it. Um, and the motivation, you've already said it, so I'm just going to affirm that we're going to go sort of fast because the, the, the draft stone is great. Um, so why does God say that I may dwell among them? A Bravanel's question, Mark. As if he were a physical being who could be limited in time and place, a flat out contradiction, to the heaven is my throne and the earth my footstool. Who could build a house for me? Isaiah 66, 1. The divine intention behind the tabernacle was to combat the idea that God has forsaken earth. It is an allegory to teach Israel that he was never remote from humankind, but a presence. But talk them. But talk them. Yeah, among them. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so, so we left Sinai. And uh, we want to take with us the experience or the feeling of Sinai, of Revelation. And so we build a place that reminds us. Um, what did Jews do uh, when they uh, moved to the suburbs in the 1950s? Um, Rabbi Heschel called it the edifice complex. <laughs> right? They built buildings. Not just buildings, but beautiful buildings. When was Larchmont Temple built? Oh, that same period. Can you beat that? WJC, same period. Um, and uh, and, and um, uh, they were, in a way, they were competing with each other. You think, that's a nice sanctuary. <laughs> Look at my dome, right? <laughs> so there was this sense that grandiosity mattered. The building somehow bespoke God's, you know, the, you know um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> so... It's always hard um, if you're reading these texts. Do we think of this as if they really were, you know, just coming out of Egypt or <laughs> later times? It's very easy to interject, as you just said, um, Large Mountain 1950 into this view of the temple. But perhaps not surprisingly, what I see is the shift from how the, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob worshiped, which was set up a shrine, set up an altar, put on a sacrifice. Yeah. That was where God was. Yeah. To a building. Yeah. To so there was this Isaac guy. So, you know, it, he, it, this didn't occur in, you know, in, in the temple. But this is a big shift. And now, of course, who wrote this shift? Maybe the priest, but in any event, whatever it was, yep. it's a major shift from Genesis. Major shift. So um, for how Judaism is going to go and um, say what you will about the edifice complex, if it weren't for that, Judaism would have died a long time ago. Well, so what's the shift here? Let's, let's just go. What's the shift here? So um, uh, the shift here is from uh, we're slaves. Right. Well, how about that? In in Genesis, right, in our origin days in the land, we worship God by building a shrine and making a sacrifice. Um, we are enslaved. We don't get none of that. Um, we're coming out, and now we're not a tribe or a tribal singular unit um, or an extended family. We are, let's say, hundreds of thousands. We're lots of people. And we're trying to galvanize around the worship of this deity, this one, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, uh, Adonai, yud heh vav -Hey. So how do we do that? Well, we need something that's central. We need something. So we just we just had the mountain. We go from the mountain to the Mishkan. Before anybody re, uh, talks, uh, Jeff, just read the Casuto. This is Umberto Casuto, great early 20th century Italian commentator. In order to understand the purpose of the tabernacle, we must realize that B'nai Israel, if they had witnessed revelation at 
Sinai had to journey on. Once I set out from there, it seemed as though a link had been broken. Uh, it was the function of the tabernacle, Mishkan, the dwelling to serve as the symbol. Dwelling all about the tribal encampments, they were able to see the Mishkan from every side. Just as the glory of God settled on the mountain, so it wandered with the people wherever they went. Yeah, where was the Mishkan, according to the, the configuration that we get? Where is the Mishkan in the Book of Note? It is in dead center. And everybody marches around it, equidistant. And what protects the Mishkan? The Levites on all four sides, right? And who's closest to the Mishkan? The Kohanim, right? Which is why, you know, anybody here Anybody here think they're a Kohen? Anybody here a Kohen? Yeah, you're nothing, me neither. All right, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, the Kohanim had status. They have, but all of us could see it, no matter who we were. Just a regular old Israelite, right? Andy and then Jane. Not only did they see us, but later on, we're going to read what the dress is. <laughs> yeah, this is a formal approach to holiness. And the Kohanim have got a gown in which there are little bells on the bottom. Yeah. You could hear. Yeah. Yeah. You, could, you couldn't see, you could hear. Yeah. So I, 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 I think that in every time and place, to involve the people was to make uh, some kind of contribution to a place that represented God. Yep. So we have already read that every person whose heart so moved him. Mm -hmm. So in the 1950s, the heart was, I got enough money, here's some money for yeah. the players, yeah. for the plumber, for the architect. Yes. Here, it's, uh, you, I'm, I'm going to give you some jewelry, go out and get uh, <clears throat> stones. Yeah, but before, yeah, yes, but uh, before you get to the 50s, good. before you get to the 50s, even here, right, the, the key point is we're building a central focus, which is somehow the representation of that mountain, right? Jane, and then Lloyd, and then Simon. When you want to honor or respect or, <clears throat> or memorialize somebody, you build something. Uh, and in this case, we want to honor um, not only Sinai and remember Sinai, um, but make God real to us. Um, so in, in, in having this central focus, um, it's not only a mini Sinai, so to speak, but it, it allows people to not only remember, but also honor and respect God. Okay, well, well said. Well said, Wood. Always, there's a tension. Yes. Because just last Saturday in the Hot Carolina, we were talking essentially about God without borders. Yeah. Thus say the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Yeah, we just quoted it. Isaiah, right? Yeah. Where can you build a house for me? What place could serve as my abode? That's God without borders. Then we look at this week's reading, which says, stick me in the middle of the camp. Then we go to Deuteronomy, and it says, in the context of Passover, you shall slaughter the Passover sacrifice for the Lord your God in the black flock and a herd, in the place where the Lord shall choose to establish his, his abode. Family. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so... So, so where is it? It sounds amorphous, and what the, it just by Tracy and Torres, and Lloyd just did. Um, the prophets clearly understood why that God was everywhere mm -hmm. and that God's presence. But where were the prophets talking from? Exile, right? So, right, pre-exilic and then post-exilic prophets, but important. And then you get the uh, the the evolution of the establishment of Israelite worship, right? which is anachronistically not yet there, right? But in the immediacy of after post-Sinai, we feel like we need well, something. Well, we, so there's an, a, a human need here. Mm -hmm. Simon, Dave, and, and then uh, Eric. Is somebody online trying to talk? If you are, hold on one second. Sorry. It's always tough to follow Lloyd because my comment is very small. <laughs> 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 I always think about reference friends. Yeah. Okay. And this guy just came out of Egypt. And Egypt had central heroes. Right? So we need to emulate what the only reference frame was and build something central. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, we, so, we, well, why else do we need centrality? Because we're a ragtag bunch of, of who knows what. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of mishmash of people coming in. So, yes, without question, right? But we need centrality. Did. So, there's a physicality to this, but there was already a physicality. There was a physicality in the the uh, the, the burning uh, thing in the sky that at night that led them. There was, with, yeah, uh, the fire by night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then mana was giving them yeah, the yeah. physical sustenance. So there already was a physicality. They saw that there was God's presence yeah, leading yeah. them. And, but but now that they're, they needed a spiritual sustenance. So maybe this is a... Uh, a spiritual manifestation of the physical, right? Right? But they need it, and it's central. I think it fits with what Gordon did just said, because it's a place, but it's mobile, and it's amongst them. They're shepherds. That's what they do. Their sustenance is their flock. This is a mobile thing that moves with them. That's part of their sustenance. Right. Key that it's portable. Key that it's portable, and it and it goes with them as they go. But don't forget Lloyd's tension. We're going to come back to that. It, it seems like it's more that they're building a concept of holiness from the from beautiful things. Okay, they, they're building a concept of holiness from beautiful things. Steve Shapiro, we're going to skip Teda Ladera. Go to uh, under twenty five nine. So go down a little bit here. Um, uh, this is the Sforno or Ovadia Sforno, um, and Sforno is noting it says so you know exactly as I show you the pattern and all its furnishings. So shall you make the Mishkan. So, so shall you make it, meaning, Steve. In such a way that I might dwell among you, and not as it was before the golden calf. And the plan was that in every place where I cause my name to be mentioned, I will come to bless you. Right, so the Sforno is saying, in fact, you need some bounds. You need, right, this is not... Let's just find God in all places, in all places. We, we, got, we got to put some structure in this because these Israelites, you know, they had they have a sordid past. And they're bringing all kinds of trinkets with them. We don't know how they're going to approach, you know, uh, you know, uh, Ehiyah, Asher Ehiyah. So there's a little bit of right, Jeff. You know, I can't quote from the Torah, but I go back from a very simplistic way back when it says, you know, the Midash is not to be measured according to my dimensions, that yours. And I just kept thinking, you know, like, you know, where's your sanctuary, where's your tabernacle, whatever. But God's all over. He's all over. And I think it was almost like a reverse. All right. So in a way, it's a reverse. But what, so what are we trying to crystallize? What are you get? Um, well, to me, there are nine, so this seems uh, in contrast towards number four, that this uh, Mishkan was for us, not for God. Why in nine is, he, is God saying, you got to build it exactly like this? That right. That is not us. Right. So there, there seems to be a contradiction in the text, um, which says, Kihol asher ani mare otcha. Just as, um, you know, just as, as, as exactly as I show you, et tavnita mishkan, the pattern of the Mishkan. So, it sounds like there's a heavenly pattern, right? That you are following. Mm -hmm. So even though, so so whose dimension is it according to? And what is so? And of course, how how are we building this thing, right? Not only where, which I think we know is central, but it doesn't say it here. But how? Go to, go to Gerson Cohen, who was the chancellor of JTS. He 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 says something that that um only the only person who says it is Jonathan is um Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, but he says it better. Uh, in the tabernacle is unique for it is not referred to as the Mishkan of Moses or even Bezala, the builder, but nor even Israel's sanctuary because it was not for them but built according to God's instructions. Yet the divine dwelling in the house was pictured in the same way God was in ancient Israel, for inside it had no icon, the innermost chamber consisted of an ark which housed the tablets given to Moses on Sinai, which we know are just a couple of rocks. So, 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 so what, so, so we're, yeah, so we're building, so what, what is, so what is he implying? What's the building code? <laughs> you, you're honoring, you're honoring the stone tablets with this pretty fancy building that I'm going to tell you how to build. Right. And so, so what, what does it say to us? 
that in fact the only thing in there besides if, if maybe there's a set the there's the altar if we want to sacrifice something but the only thing in there is that ark with those tablets right what is that saying to us um i'm i'm gonna i'm not sure that i was going to answer that but answer whatever you want it's okay <laughs> so um it's, it's sort of God is the architect of this thing because you're building it exactly that way. Okay. Like he was the architect of the world in Bereshit. Yeah. So in fact, the rabbis liken this to a new creation, right? Right. Um, uh, right? Was everybody going to say no? No. What I was going to say is it's a space for God's presence. I mean, that's only only the, that. I mean, that's all that is. Okay. And so so it's a space for God's presence. And of course, there couldn't be any icon. No. There couldn't be any image, right? But there is an image. There is something, right? I think there's a little more practical going on here. That is, when Moses calls everybody together, it's done in front of the Mishkan. In other words, it's, a central, it's the central plaza of the community. It's the place where people come together to hear. I mean, if you didn't have that, it would be you'd be all over the place. So it's a go-to. I mean, okay. It's, it, I mean, it okay. acts as a very practical way to keep the community together. Right. So it, it, right. it's sort of an extension of what, or it's a side offshoot from what Dave said, an offshoot of what Dave said, which is spiritual center, pragmatic, you know, sort of, this is where we, this is the nexus, the locus, right? Um, I just want to know what Josh said. Uh, what Josh said was, it's the, it's elevating, why the tabernacle, what, why is, what's in the, in the Mishkan? Uh, or the Mikdash, I should say, um, the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Why? It's knowledge. It's instruction. It's education. It's Torah. We're carrying Torah around. I might want to take that one step further. Okay. The center of the message is coming. Yep. It's not God's voice that's going to travel with you. It's going to be God's word. God's word is what is ultimately portable. Text, scripture, are portable. God's voice gets heard, gets lost in the din. The text, we're here on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Still carrying the ark around. So now, Jane, before you say anything, you got to read the Sfas Emmas. Because I think, you, are you up, Jane? I don't remember who's up. Did Andy just read? Yeah. So, Jane, go ahead. See the spot. This is the Gera Rebbe, and again, it's exactly what has just been articulated, except in a 19th century Hasidic panel. The Midrash tells us that the Holy One asks, how long shall I wander without a home? Every person in Israel contains a divine force. Even when sin distances us from this inner force, our roots above compel us to return to our rightful place. So the Mishkan reminds us that the desire is every present. And just this, and just this is the secret of the sanctuary. For Ken Teasu, so shall you make it, an action that is never complete. For the Mishkan is a project that goes on without end. Why? What is he trying to say? He's 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 giving us what the mission is, and why we're still building it. Came to Asu, so shall you make it, because the word of God is never complete. Mm -hmm. Because if we are in fact carrying with us the word of God in this in this Mishkan, we're we're always trying to use that as the building code to finish the work of creation, so it becomes redemption, right? It Jay. has to do with, um, with uh, I, what God said, I am what I am, I will be what I will be, but it's, it's the becoming portion. Yeah, 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 as Lloyd articulated, the becoming, Lloyd, go ahead. And I might give this file, Sam, is an additional plug. He's writing out of Poland, he's deep in exile, <laughs> rabbinic, Tradition says the third temple will be built by fire by God Himself. So what are you left with? The tabernacle. This portable creation. And that can move wherever you are. Even in Poland. Even in the midst of darkness in Poland. Yes, John Borton, I'm sorry, I, I missed your question. I'm sorry. Or your comment. Well, my question actually goes back to Gerson Cohen. I, in, the text, as translated, says that you bring the gift of your heart, but Moses has to accept it for God. Mm -hmm. And I don't quite understand why that, if that in fact is the Hebrew, why Moses was sort of 
validating the gift of the individual heart? Why was he the intermediary? Oh, oh you're talking about the beginning of the portion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by Yichuli Trumama et Kol Ish, I show you Yeah, um, I, I think that um, I, I think that um, Moses is trying to regulate the giving process. I think that's it's not much more than that. I don't believe it's intermediary because everybody's bringing, and we see the same kind of language. And it, notice it says, uh, you know, it says take for me. So these are somehow direct for from for God. Um, don't miss what was just articulated here and what Lloyd alluded to. If you can create a mikdash way back when that sits in the middle of the people, that houses the commandments, by the way, not just the Ten Commandments of the, the uh, stones that we still have, but the, the rubble from the broken, the shattered tablets, they're right next to it in the ark, mm -hmm. right? That's the only image we have so that even though the voice of God doesn't speak, the word of God does speak mm -hmm. still. You know, it's the antithesis of where they came from. They were slaves building pyramids that was fixated in one place. And in the pyramid was, was a, a body, you know, that was entombed. And that was supposed to be the word of God. That yep. was supposed to be the God. Yeah. This is the entire, this is 180 degrees different than from what they've come from. Yes. And, and it's portable. Try moving a pyramid. I yeah. Mean, that's not such an easy thing. Right. Which is, why, which is why Harry's question is so important, right? Which is, right, um, the fact that they did this enabled the people to make that transition from tribal or tribes or tribe, family extended, um, worshiping God, you know, by building a, a shrine in a high place or a look to a central, you know, centralized, connected place in a pragmatic way and in a spiritual way um, where we would, right, worship the Holy One, um, Michael. So and then fill up, and then we're going to go back. Is this where we become the people of the book? Uh, we, start, we start with the rocks in the tabernacle. Well, we're yeah. sitting here today with all the commentary that now kind of goes into that. Yeah, I think we become the people of the book a little later. But this is the foundation. This is the foundation. Philip. People of the stones. The people of the stones. So um, this always has struck me as the midpoint between building... Um, your stacking up your stones, your altar, and where we finally arrived with the temple. The temple, yeah. So this is the the kind of a step right in the middle between that final decision that you worship at a central location, because this is a movable uh, feast. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and just one other thing on it is that if the stones had not been put there, especially the first tablets that were broken, if they had not been given that space, then they would no longer be sacred. It's by setting these things aside that they become sacred to us. And this is something sacred we can take with us. Yes. The, 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 yeah. So I, I agree with you that if, if this is the, the bridge between, you know, a high place or sacrificing wherever we happen to be in the middle of the wilderness, Beersheba or you name it, you know, um, you know, or Beit El to, um, the temple in Jerusalem, the holy temple. But what's crucial here is the rabbis understand, as it's implied by the, the language here, is Vasui Mikdashri Let them make me a sanctuary. As was noted, command or is it an ongoing process? Look at the Rav Cook. Yes, spiritual chief rabbi of Palestine, free state Israel, right? But Simon, give us the Rav Cook. We are a nation that met God, which gave us our national identity. This was initially at Sinai, yet this meeting was not a singular event, but an ongoing relationship. That is the meaning of the Mishkan, a forum where we could continue the eternal meeting with the Almighty. So our meeting with your God hey, continues through the channel of the Mishkan. Somehow, says Rob Cook, as was intimated, Right, just by Philip, by Lloyd, uh, by others. The fact that we're building this and that we built this, um, was it about the building? It was a place where we could meet, right? And I would say the most barbarian sense, the holy or the holy one. Um, not to limit God, but to highlight 
that that's the place, right, where God's presence dwells. I'll bring Rob Cook back to the question of where will this be? Yeah. So, um, and national identity. So Rob Cook is writing, as you say, in Palestine. 1930s. 1930s. Um, you know, reestablishing the Jewish control over the Holy Land. Yeah. So this is the through thread. It's that movable central place is on the march. Yes. Back to Israel. Yes. Yes. So no, no question. His project. Yeah. 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 No, not, not a question. It's his, it's his project, of course, and a project that, you know, as a Jewish people, we, we say oh, yeah, that never ceased. Um, but um, the Mishkan and the process of building the Mishkan continues to this day because it's not complete. Mm. That's, that, that could be the key. Um, uh, do I want to do this now? Um, uh, no, uh, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to make that towards the end. We can see it. Uh, but you can see it. But people, if you're not, so wait a minute. Let me, let me see if I can do this. So wait, <laughs> if I do this, do you see the wall over there? No, you don't. No, oh, no, no. That's not this. Oh, that's too bad. That's too you bad. You could switch to the laptop and then you could, and then you could switch back. I may do that after. I may, I may make Philip be my, my high tech guy. But at any rate, at any rate, so we're going to go to the Velveteen Rabbi uh, as opposed to the Velveteen Rabbi. You got to hold on to it. Um, and so here's the key. Here's the key. Um, if we're still building the Mishkan and the tension that was noted is still there, because What's the danger for Jews to say God dwells here? Well, the danger is that God doesn't dwell there. Mm -hmm. um, or that we misunderstand what it means to create a dwelling place for holiness. That is not saying that God isn't in all places, right? So that that's, it's, a, it's a tension. You'd think it was obvious, but it's not so obvious. So what are we doing today? And how are we still building the Mishkan today? That really gives us our purpose. We have two great um, uh, uh, female identified rabbis. Um, uh, uh, this is Rachel Berenblatt, uh, who's up in uh, in Massachusetts. The Berkshires uh, first. Uh, I'd have people online read this. How about Carol Sheffer? Carol, you up to reading a little bit? And sure. then and, and then we'll go to Elaine Chapnick. We're diving deep this week into the description of the materials used to build the Mishkan, the portable tabernacle the Israelites built in order to carry the tablets from Sinai with them in the wilderness. Some interpretations hold that the Mishkan is built on a mystical blueprint, which matches the blueprint of creation itself. Others see the Mishkan as a temporary portable first draft for the eventual temple in Jerusalem. The Mishkan is a big deal. We'll spend weeks reading about its construction, but the Torah offers up what is arguably the most important detail at the very beginning of all of the descriptions, the reason why the Israelites are building this sanctuary in the first place. The word Mishkan comes from the same root as the word Shekhinah, the divine presence which dwells in creation. You might imagine, therefore, that God would dwell within the elaborate structures of gold and acacia wood, tan skins, and woven tapestries of blue and crimson and purple, which the Torah describes. Or that God would eventually dwell within the temple when we reach the point in our history when that structure is built, all shining white limestone atop one of Jerusalem's hills. But God dwells everywhere. As our liturgy reminds us, the whole earth is full of divine glory. The reason the Israelites built the Mishkan was so that God would dwell within them. All right. So, so the key here is, um, as the Tzedah Laderach, which you notice I didn't read. I wanted to skip till we came to this. The Tzedah Laderach, right? Uh, I think since 17th or 18th, I don't remember, century, uh, Neil Hasidic commentator says, the text does not say betocho, but rather betocham in them. This teaches that the divine presence does not rest on the sanctuary by virtue of the building, but by virtue of the builders, for they are the temple of Adonai. Yeah. The builders are the temple. So now we're getting someplace. 
right? Elaine Chapnick, are you ready to pick it up? Like our ancestors. Elaine, you there? Like our ancestors, we the structures in our lives. Literal, like the Elaine, hold on one sec. Elaine, hold on one sec. We're getting. Yes. I'm, can you hear me? Something's wrong. I'm. Can you we hear me? A, I'm unmuted. We have a bad connection. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Um, what you see? Echo canceling speaker. LG. You know what? Um, I think it's supposed to be like this. Echo canceling speaker phone. All right. Um, yep. Elaine, Somebody else. Try again. Like our ancestors, we too build religious. Structures in our lives. That's good. Some That's good. Literal... Yeah, Keep going, Elaine. She's frozen. All right, it's Elaine. Horrible. Yeah, Elaine, you, you, you're freezing here. I'm going to get what Michael Feinberg agreed. I think the Paris connection is going to be clear. <laughs> up the street on Front Avenue. Hold on, Elaine. Hold on one second. Michael, you, let me see how you are. Try if you hear me. Tell me if you don't hear. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you fine. Okay. Like our ancestors, we too build religious structures in our lives. Some are literal, like this beautiful building of cement and copper and wood and glass. <clears throat> Some are metaphorical, the structures of practice and ritual and prayer. But the purpose of all of them is to invite God to dwell within us. I've heard me say something like this before. In introducing the Ashray, Rabbi Phyllis Berman taught me to understand that the prayer's first line, happy are they who dwell in your house, they will praise you forever, as an invitation for us to be joyous dwelling in our own bodies. This body, this heart, is God's house. When we create beautiful places with the intention of opening ourselves to holiness, God takes root in our hearts. When we engage in beautiful practices with the intention of opening ourselves to holiness, God enlivens us. We are the Mishka, the tabernacle, the temple where we seek for God to dwell. Why do we need to build the structures, the buildings, the practices? Why can't we just invite God in? Well, we can. But that doesn't always work. Just saying, hey, God, I want to open myself up to you. What does that really do? For most of us, it isn't enough. A better way to cultivate holiness in our lives is to enter into the practices, to take on the work of building something together. We don't have a Mishkan to build anymore, but we can enter into the work of building our synagogue community. Show up to make a minion. Mix meatloaf for take a deed. Plant a synagogue garden in the spring. Join the Hesed Committee. And visit our members who are homebound or sick. We build our community in a million little ways. And when we do, we invite God to dwell within us. Beautiful. Beautiful. Steve Shapiro. And then I'm going to comment Lloyd, then I'm going to comment Susan, then I'm going to comment. So this reminds me of the story you tell that when you were in um, in Emmanuel and Billy Dresden was standing behind yes, you. Yes, yes. you turned around and said, God, well, so God must live here. I said, God must live here. And, but it was really about how all the rabbis were being ordained. ordained. Yeah. And yes. And you talk about bringing God into you know, and having people go out. Yeah. This, this is it. Yeah. This is that moment. Totally. 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 Yeah. <laughs> After Shabbos. Go ahead. Wait. Really sharp. It chooses the entree. Yeah. Because the body of the entree is a completely different song. Yeah. Entree has two, three prefatory verses. Praise the person who dwells in your house. He's happy. He's this. He's that. But the guts of Ashray isn't that. Right. It's a separate psalm, which is psalm unto David. And it's individualized. It's not communal. Right. The Ashray is communal and makes it Israel centric. Yeah. Yeah. Not the individual. Yeah. 
And what she has done, because I am sure she knows this far. She knows it. I, she knows it. She's smart. She goes with that. Yeah. Yeah. Which which is saying, what is the what is the transition between God dwells in each individual and God dwells among us? What is the transition? It is it is bingo. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, amongst us, within us, around us. Yeah. It comes together on Saturday mornings for yeah. many of us. Yeah. And and even people who are online fall away, feel the vibration and come. Yeah. Yeah, even right. So, so I love. I yeah, you know, listen. It's no secret. I love Susan. You know, and I love her spirituality. It just radiates up. But the idea here is that somehow those bro, even the broken tablets, even our brokenness, but somehow we transform right ourselves through the process of learning, mm -hmm. through the process of sharing, through the process of doing. As the as uh, Rabbi Berenblatt says, do a little mitzvah, go to that shiva. Bring somebody a meal. Um, come to services. Um, be a part of that small group. Somehow, you are creating a place for God to dwell. Dave, and then Harry. So in the text, it says, among us. And uh, Baron Blatt says, within them. And I didn't know if maybe this was the time you might want to jump over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can do this. And, so, and then I can yeah. read for you if you want. Uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, you're... Yes, that'd be that'd be lovely. So hold on. So yeah, so you are you are gonna be I'm gonna call on you for Noah Kushner, right? Um, and then I'm gonna find somebody online. Elaine, I'm sorry you you kept breaking up. I don't know why. Um, you know, from uh and I, oh so now you're frozen. But but uh but but maybe I'll maybe I'll go to Virginia um uh and 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 uh and 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 Mitzi. We'll see. We'll see. But first uh, first um yeah. So um, all of these things are true about the things that have to go on, but it seems to me the insight here is you need a place where they can happen. So it this isn't pantheism, right? This isn't God is everywhere, so we can be everywhere. This is God is somewhere, and we're somewhere. We we do gather here physically each week, and we wouldn't do it unless we had built the building, right? So. It, it's a it's a tension, mm -hmm. but it's also a key insight that you do need that central spot in some way, and it can't just be you know it's yeah 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 it again something in it again it is it's it is a tension and uh, and I'm going to quote Larry Hoffman but not right this second uh, because he defines synagogue in a different way, um, but but we're going to get there we're going to get there very shortly. Um, do I have time? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm going to hold off on, on doing my thing over there. I'm going to do it at the end. Um, Dave's going to start, um, and uh, and then we'll do Virginia, and maybe Mitzi will finish up the Noah Kushner. Yes, Noah Kushner is Rabbi Larry Kushner's daughter. Um, she is as 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 uh, visceral and visionary as Kushner, um, and she started something called the Kitchen in San Francisco. Uh, it is her. Uh, it was it was an, a sort of an indie minion that became a community with a building, um, uh, which was almost revelatory to her. Uh, she's a transformational rabbi, um, and she tells the story uh, of I think answering Arkoshi in a really cool way. Uh, how does building holy community frame our purpose and help us answer the call? Noah Kushner, start us off. I was teaching about the Mishkan, that holy place we were commanded to create in the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere, so that we might meet with God. The rabbis have far-reaching interpretations of how we found what we needed in order to create such a place. <laughs> One item in particular captured the attention. The 32 cubit, approximately 48 foot, cedar beam. According to the story, the tree from which this wood was, was to be taken is planted hundreds of years earlier by Abraham, our first collective ancestor, and then harvested by his grandson Jacob, who then somehow sneaks it into Egypt, where it survives generations of slavery so that his children can sneak it back out into freedom again. In one scene, Jacob is begging and pleading with his sons to carry the being with them, no matter what. Someday, you will be asked, says Jacob. 
I probably won't be with you any longer, but I promise someday we'll ask, God will ask you, or maybe God will ask your children for this being. It will be for nothing less than holding up a place where you can meet with God. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you have everything you need. I was teaching this story to a group of parents in our school. One parent raised her hand. My daughter wants to know why we come here, she asked. What should I tell her? The daughter's question is the question. It is our question. Why comes in all kinds of flavors and forms, but regarding the religion, it's surely propelled by a, largely, uh, by a larger society that at best does not understand religion and at worst, dismisses it as irrelevant or oppressive. Why in our context most often insinuates the need for justification? Therefore, if we try to answer this why on society's terms alone, we have already lost the argument. Instead, we must fundamentally alter the very basis of the conversation. We have to address where the why is coming from. Whether the synagogue is relevant is not the question. The question is whether our lives are relevant. And if so, to what end? Right. She's very smart. And she understands. She she understands as somebody who built and is building a sacred community. Virginia, you want to, you want to pick it up a little? Sure. Returning to the mother's question, I said, I think you should tell your daughter that the reason we came here on Shabbat and learned and prayed together is because someday... God is going to ask her and us to build something holy, some kind of a holy place where God can meet us in this world. And you want to make sure she's ready. I am dead serious, I said. That really is the only possible answer. Why religion? Why synagogues? Or whatever you want to call the communal project of finding God with other people. Why? So that when we are asked, we'll be ready. We will remember that we have what we need. When we started the kitchen about 10 years ago, the energy around Silicon Valley felt positively messianic. Social media was going to connect the world for the better. Religion mm -hmm. here felt like a relic, something to be politely tolerated, not engaged seriously. Our first move was to incorporate all kinds of innovation and creative design. But the more we tried to redesign a holy place, the more humbled I became in the face of the elegant genius of our communal Shabbat. It was almost unparalleled in its design, that is, in its ability to bring together a large group of people, each with different profound needs. That's, that's it. No, but one more paragraph. Okay. Uh, da -da -da, okay. Uh, unlike, unlike organizations that constantly make the case for their own necessity, ours had a number of intensely compelling entryways. Someone might join us out of a need to be with people or teach their children what it means to be in a holy place. Someone might join us out of a need to respond communally to a political event, a moment in history or in society. Someone might want to engage personally with a mythic narrative the stories that literally shape us. Someone might want to seek an experience of holiness of, or God. However, would they define it? And here, I'm only scratching the surface. All right, Mitzi, pick it up, if you can. The longer we kept going, the more I understood that there were an increasing number of doors, each one more immediate and fundamental than the next. A person could be mourning or sick or pregnant or in love, and somehow, all of these circumstances lent themselves to a need to be together on Shabbat. We invented exactly zero of these doors, but they were all unlocked, ajar, as if waiting for these generations to find and go through them. So we stopped trying to open, the, trying to build doors, and instead just worked to make our Shabbat the most powerful and transcendent one it could be rather than questioning the necessity of Shabbat or religion or the institutions that helped us find God with other people, we tried to ask harder questions about the way we live the rest of our lives. Of course, over the years, even with the best of intentions, we still often forget to ask the hard questions. During the week, we are dragged into budgets and politics, ego contests, our own vanities and fears, all of those things that insert and inflate themselves 
as if they are real and very important. The difference is that on Shabbat, now that we have it, and we have each other and the experience of building a holy place again and again, we remember more easily. Eden is real. Sinai is real. The wandering takes a while, but there is a promised land. Now we remember. Jacob was right. God still asks us to build holy places. And so we must be ready. We must make sure we have everything we need. What is she trying to say to us? Yeah, good. One thought I had was comparing like the social media sites and discussions. It's sort of empty and moral. She's saying, here's a way for communities to form like you're doing social media. Here's a way for communities to form, but with a higher purpose. Yes. And now I go back and answer my question I asked before. Why why did God build have a design for the Mishra to say it's not just a room, an empty room with anything. This is a room about God. Yeah, yeah, and even more than that, right? So how do we build? What is she saying? How do we build? What are we doing? What's our building? What's our building material? What is it? She's saying we are building by being who we are, right? It's not a building. Yeah, it is a building. But we're how do we build? We build by being who we are, by being, right? By making Shabbat, right? As Mitzi just read the kicker here, right? What, what does she say? She says... That on Shabbat, right, we experience building a holy place again and again and again. The building process never stops, aren't it? You know, uh, you listening to this stuff. Do we camera over there? I'm sure. Yeah, I like I'm thinking that. if you just walk over there, it'll be just because the. When oh, because I walk and talk from there. I get you. Okay. Arnie, talk. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. Listening to the dialogue and what makes this building, this physical place, so important is one thing. We're all at different points in our life, grieving, marriage, divorce, babies, grandparenting. Mm -hmm. But we come here with a common purpose. And what is the purpose? The purpose is to try to make our lives more spiritual, more beautiful, more uplifting. And by listening to each other, I think that brings out the differences in a way that's very loving and up uplifting. Yeah. So I think having a physical place is important, but the intent that goes into that place is equally important. So what are we building? So Arnie, Arnie I'm going to pay Arnie up Shabbat. I'm not paying you, Steve. I'm paying Arnie. Um, that was beautiful. So look at it. So it says, uh, Suli, am I on camera now for everybody? Michael, am I on camera for yeah, 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 Am I right here? All right. It says, Asuli Mikdash. So make a holy place for me, right? A holy place, um, right? The holy place, right? It, and, and what does God say to us in... Uh, in the book of uh, of Leviticus, chapter nineteen, right? Kedoshim to you, you shall be holy. Oh, so it's not just about the place; it's about the people who build it, because that's where holiness dwells. But not just in individuals, as Lloyd alluded. Um, shachanti, right? I'm going to dwell, right? That I may dwell. But the word shachan, as was alluded, is shechina. That is the divine indwelling of God. So the goal is to create a place where God can dwell, right? Not just, right? Not, so where does God dwell? God dwells, bitokam, right? As, as Susan so beautifully said, among, within, between. I would add another one. This is not really the word, beyond, right? So uh, where does God dwell? God dwells, right? Or the Shekhinah dwells. Whenever we are together, doing what we do, being who we are, <laughs> and the Shekhinah, which is right here, the divine indwelling of God, change one vowel, just one vowel, and you get the word Shekhuna, which is the word for neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's about, in all of our different needs, coming together, bringing together your tsaris, your celebration, your question, your commitment, and everybody, right? And so I think it's about us being the building, right, where God dwells. Us, all of us, right? So I think, to, to me, this is the verse, right? You can take any other verse. I'll take this verse and put it on the outside of my temple. Um, I will say 
I will say that our builders or our people in 1960 decided to put um, what does the Lord require of you? Only this, right? Uh, the microverse. Why did they choose the microverse? Because it was a good church verse. Oh. And because it's a beautiful verse as well. It's prophetic Judaism at its highest, okay. right? Right. I have nothing wrong with that verse. I love it, right? But I will say, if I could have a verse, it's this verse, mm -hmm. right? Because we are building it every week. The building process is not complete. Thank God. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm sorry if we had the technical difficulties. It's great to see you all, as always. As always, enjoy the snow. Thank you. Even in the snow. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, guys. Shabbat shalom, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Bitsy. Thank you. Good to see you, June. I would say that was. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. Arnie was sounding dangerously a provincial today. Dangerous. Thank you. He wants to go to the rabbit. He's thinking about I love that. I love that. What I, love, what I love about the verse, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs>